Revelation chapter 17. For our guests, we are going through the book of Revelation. And uh, we are enjoying our study there. And I just want to say, uh, we sing and we preach the Word of God. We, un we unashamedly say, uh, it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what man says. We as Christians and members of Rye Hill Baptist Church, we are going to preach, teach, and live the Word of God. It is right. It is yes. It is amen. And we cannot, you know, look at the Word and say, I don't like that part, or I don't agree with that part. Folks, we need to read the Word of God, and we need to change. We need to realize that God has a plan for our life. He has that abundant life for us. And I will, to my dying days, I don't care what the government says. I don't care who says they're going to censor us. It's not happening uh, here and at this, at this point. We're not going to do it. And I mean this with all my heart. If I have to start a jail ministry, I'll start a jail ministry because I will not compromise the Word of God. If you have your bulletin, you want to follow along with us today. I'm speaking on the subject of religious Babylon destroyed. Religious Babylon destroyed. Folks, as we walk through these bold judgments, as we've walked through the sealed judgments and the trumpet judgments, folks, it is God's judgment on a crooked uh, uh, nation and on a crooked world. We have bought in to the world philosophies. And again, folks, I am telling you, God's plan always worked. It was Adam and Eve. It was man married to woman. And we need to, we need to understand that is God's plan for our lives. We need to understand God says one of his commandments we covered in our men's ministry yesterday, thou shalt not commit murder. I don't care what the world is doing. Aborting babies is wrong. Life begins at conception. And we will talk about that, by the way, next week. We will do that next week. So we are going to go by the Word of God. Have two points today, two times in a row we've had two points. Number one, Babylon the harlot. Babylon the harlot. I know that sounds bad, but folks, I'm just telling you, uh, it is a metaphor for, a, for, for uh, people that live and survive the tribulation period. And the second one is Babylon explained. Babylon explained. Folks, I'm telling you, Satan has a plan himself. Satan has a plan, all right? He, he uh, is empowering the Antichrist at this point. And the false prophet is coming in, and he's going to encourage those who are still surviving that time to worship the Antichrist. Folks, we worship only one God, and that is Jehovah God of this Bible. We worship no other gods. And the first commandment is, thou shalt have no other gods before us. So we must follow the word of God. Chapter 17 in Revelation describes the coming judgment of God on the religious system that has enslaved human race in darkness for centuries. Folks, sin goes all the way back to the garden of Adam and Eve. And they've been sinning, man has been sinning since then. Archaeologists tell us that Babylon was the cradle of civilization. This city is located on the shores of the Euphrates River. It was begun by Nimrod, who rebelled against God and allowed all kinds of evil of, uh, to fall on mankind. False religion has its start there. Folks, there is false religion all over our world. It's their interpretation. It's a man saying and interpreting things the wrong way way. And it says, Revelation 17 describes the coming judgment of God on the religious system of the end times. During the tribulation, people will seek some kind of religion because of all that is happening in the world. The problem is they will turn to the wrong religion where the Antichrist 
the false prophet and Satan himself will lead them to eternal destruction and damnation in hell. Let's look at the great Babylon according to Scripture. And remember, if you remember these two things, you will understand this chapter. The harlot is false religion. False religion and the scarlet beast is the Antichrist. And by the way, I just want to mention one more thing. This AI, artificial intelligence, I am telling you, it is going to come in and the Antichrist is going to use that. He will use that. I, and and I'm, I'm going to get a sermon up and somewhere in the book, I mean in our Revelation series, I'm going to preach on that. But he will deceive a lot of mankind. And if you will look at Matthew chapter 24, 24, it says, if possible, it will, he will deceive even the elect. Not that you can lose your salvation, okay? Because we believe once saved, always saved. But it is going to be what is false. What you may see and what appears to be one thing, it's not going to be that thing. And if we as Christians, we need to discern the truth of the Word of God in our lives. So that's just something. And, and that one's free, okay? <laughs> Babylon the harlot. Revelation 17. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls, which we covered in chapter 16, came and talked with me saying, come and I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. And we see here the judgments is, is, is coming. That last judgment was the worst judgment and it'll fall on mankind. It will fall on the lost people of that day. And the great harlot, like we said, uh, it, it is a false religion. And people fall into false religions all the time. Folks, there are some religions that I see, and, and I just, I, I'll look at them, and I'll start reading some of the stuff, and I'm thinking, where do they get this stuff? And folks, it needs to be out of the Word of God. There are false religions and false churches all over the world. And during these last days, during these last times, it will run rampant. And it says, the great harlot who sits on many waters. This will be a worldwide thing, okay? It's just like nowadays. Who, who would have ever thought that you could be in your home in Fort Smith and you can just punch in a few buttons and you can talk to someone overseas, you know, uh, in India right then. Who would ever thought, you know, with, with our, the media and all this going on, we can, we can see and we can know news that happens right then. And these things will still be going on during the great tribulation time. So there will be all these false things going on and there will be people, I am telling you, that will take it hook line and sinker. And folks, we do not need to buy in to the world's ways. We need to listen to God and listen to the Holy Spirit with whom the kings of the earth has committed fornication. And again, he's not talking about literal fornication. We know the Bible teaches us that adultery and fornication is wrong. Adultery is cheating on your spouse. It is wrong. It is destructive. It can, it can uh, ruin families and ruin lives. And fornications, listen to me, teenagers, you are supposed to save yourself for marriage. You don't need to be sleeping around. You need to save yourself. That, that, that purity of, of, of your life and your virginity is something you need to keep. And I'll tell you what, girls, there's guys that just want to conquer. That's all they want. It's all about them. Do not go there. It is a sin against God. And, and that's what it's talking about. Uh, the fornication is, that's the physical part of that, but it's cheating on God. It is called spiritual adultery. Okay? When you do things that is against the Word of God, you are committing spiritual adultery. God has set the rules out. 
And it's not just the Ten Commandments. We covered the Ten Commandments yesterday, and we need to obey the Ten Commandments. But, it, but the Word of God is a lot more, has a lot more details than that. So in the end times, there's this spiritual fornication going on, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Why do people, uh, you know, get, get drunk? I mean, th there are people, in, and I think a lot of times, they're just trying to drown their sorrows away. But when you get drunk, you kind of lose, uh, you know, your, your compass, and you kind of lose. You, you're not making good decisions. You're, you're not doing what you ought to be doing as Christians. We should not get drunk as Christians. But the same thing is with the spiritual side of that. If we just take in and embrace everything the world says, again, we are committing spiritual fornication. Verse 3, so he carried me away in the spirit, and here's a vision change, into the wilderness. And why the wilderness? Because I'm telling you, if you go against God, that's where you're going to live. That's where you're going to be, all right? It's not going to be a pretty thing. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beach, beast, excuse me, which was full of names of blasphemy. And we know the woman, again, is false religion. The scarlet beast is the Antichrist, and it which was full of names of blasphemy. Folks, the Antichrist deal in the last days, he is making himself God. He is taking names for God and taking them on. He is personalizing them, and he is saying, I am God. I am the one you need to worship. And folks, that is blasphemy. And the Bible clearly says, you know, those who blaspheme God will not spend an eternity. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is the unpardonable sin. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And that's not recognizing God for who he is. And having seven heads and ten horns. This is about fourth or fifth time this phrase has come up. And the seven heads are the seven empires. Six have already happened, and the seventh one will be the empire in the end days of the Antichrist. It'll be him ruling the world. And the ten horns are the ten kings that will follow him. Verse 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones of pearls. And again, you look at you know, prostitutes, and you look at, you know, harlots, and, and again, I, you know, I, I know it just sounds rough in, in a church setting, but uh, this is just the way the, the Scripture is written. And a lot of them, they have a ton of makeup on. They have jewelry on. They just adore themselves, where when you look on the outside, everything looks good. They look rich. They look beautiful. But I am telling you, their goal is something that is negative, and that will hurt your walk with Christ. Having in her hand a golden cup full of abomination and filthiness in her fornication. And that golden cup, when you think of abominations, folks, I am telling you, it's things that go against God. It goes against God. And, and they, are, they, are, they are just terrible things, okay? They are things that you would not even think about doing or in our day and age. This, what's, this is what amazes me nowadays. There are things in shows on TV that when I was a kid, it would never be on TV. It, it just wouldn't be there. You didn't talk about it. You certainly didn't watch it, all right? But yet the world is consistently getting, the world system it's just getting filthier and filthier and filthier. I'm telling you, there's times I'll be watching a football game, and I literally have to turn the channel in commercials because some lady's up there half-dressed or a commercial where and two men are kissing one another. These things are going on before our eyes. And parents, you need to filter. You need to know what your children are 
are watching on TV and what they are watching on their phones. They will be drugged into this world if we are not careful. And on our forehead was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, of the abomination of the earth. And back in the Roman days, the prostitutes or the harlots, they would wear a headband on and their names would be on their forehead so that they could identify who was a prostitute and who was a harlot. And, and here he is saying, he's making this comparison with the world in the end times. And I truly believe I can't make it bad enough. I can't make it. I, I'm just trying, I'm trying to keep, keep it PG here, all right? But it'll be the worst time. No rules, all right? No discipline in people's lives. If you want it, you get it. And if you can't get it, you kill for it. We are talking about desperate times in the last part of the tribulation. And notice the mystery. What, what is a mystery? A mystery is something we haven't figured out. But do you know that we know the answer to the mystery? God has opened the mystery. God has opened the Bible, and we know how it's going to end, folks. We know. We win. We win. Man, it's not a mystery to us. And I know a lot of people struggle with the book of Revelation. But you have to understand, you have to, you have to take your time when you read it. You have to slow down and figure out what each word means. And most people, uh, because we live in such a hurried up world, we don't have time to do that. And he's saying here, listen, I'm opening the book for you. This last days, this harlot, okay, this, this prostitute, and we're talking about spiritual prostitution, is going to try to take over this world. It's going to make us believe that what is true is not true, and what is a lie is true. And that mystery is Babylon the Great, the mother of all, of, of all harlots. What does the mother of all harlots mean? I am telling you, folks, it is the worst of the worst. You think it's bad today? I'm telling you folks, in this time, we won't even be able to compare it to the way it will be then. And then I saw a woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And what is he saying? He's saying, I'm telling you, this, this woman, this, this you know, uh, harlot, she's not going to care about who you are, about what you believe, and if you don't believe like she does, she's going to take lives. She's going to, uh, you know, the Christians are going to be murdered. I'm just telling you, if you carry a Bible or if you proclaim the name of Jesus in those times, you will be taken out. You will be killed. And so you can see just the harsh, you know, harshness of that world system, of that religious, and they do it, and that's what so bad, folks, they do it uh, in the name of religion. Folks, there's a huge difference between religion and righteousness. Religion is what you think you are. Religion is what man says you are. Righteousness is what God says you are. Righteousness is what the Bible says. And I'm telling you, that's what it's talking about, drunk with the blood. She's not going to care who you are or who you are with or who you represent, if you go against that world system of the Antichrist, you will die. You will be a martyr for Jesus Christ. And listen to John. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. John was just blown away. Folks, he lived in the first century. There was Christian martyring going on during that time. But for God to open up heaven and Jesus to open up heaven and what he was seeing, it was unbelievable. It amazed John. Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah 51. I always try to get us back to uh, the Old Testament. Here's an Old Testament prophecy. G uh, Jeremiah 51 6. Flee from the midst of Babylon and everyone save his life. Do not be cut off in her iniquity. 
for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. Judgment will come during that time. He shall recompense her. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all, all the earth drink, drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations are deranged. Folks, you are crazy. Deranged means crazy. You are crazy to follow the Antichrist in the world system that we have, says Jeremiah. And this thing of worshiping a false god is nothing new in the Word of God. Daniel chapter 3. Look at Daniel 3, and you know the story. Daniel chapter 3. Let me get there. Boy, sometimes I... Oh, there we go. Daniel 3. And Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits, and it's with six cubits. And he set up at the plains of Dura, the providence of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word together, together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, treasurers, the judges, all the official people to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar set up. He did the very thing that the Bible tells us not to do, not to do. So all these people get together, all right, and all of them stood before the image. Look at verse 4. Then a herald cried to you, it is commanded, O peoples and languages, that at time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, the, uh, the, the soft reed, all this going down, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Folks, this is nothing new. We're going back, going back to Old Testament days. This has happened before, and whoever does not worship, does not fall down in worship, shall be cast immediately into the burning fire. It's happened before, and it's going to happen again. James chapter 4. Look at James 4. James 4, verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses. This is James. And I will say, James was a straight shooter, folks. All right? He is saying, men and women who cheat on God, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity against God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. Folks, I don't care what our world is doing. If it is wrong, it is wrong. We do not need to be a part of that. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Folks, we don't. A lot of people just laugh at sin this day. Sin is not funny and should not be funny to a Christian. It says lament and mourn and weep. We should be broken over our sin. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Oh, folks, there's two things that this world is, and, and we've bought into both of these things. Number one is self-reliance. I can live my life. I can do what I want. I can be anything I want. I don't need God, all right? I don't want to take the time. All right, I, I don't want anybody telling me what to do. Self-reliance self is a way of the world, and the other one is entitlement. And this, one, this one's killing me, folks. It's just killing me. Think about this. What is the greatest thing that has happened in your life? The greatest thing, period, if you're a Christian. You got saved. Amen. Can I say this? Well, I'm going to say it. God doesn't owe you anything after that. We are so entitled, and people will shoot each other. People will stab each other. 
People will talk about each other if they don't get what they want. Oh, listen to me, Christian. If you are saved, if you have truly been saved, everything you have, everything you have is a gift from God. And we get the blessings of God in our lives. That should be enough. So we see Babylon the harlot. And the second thing, Babylon explained. Look at verse 7. Babylon explained. But the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. And the beast that you saw was and is not will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. Oh, folks, the Antichrist is going to be like no other man before. I just jotted down some characteristics as doing research on the Antichrist and his characters. He, he will be an intellectual genius, smart. He will be an outstanding orator, a great speaker. He will be a great military leader. He will be a mani manipulating politician. He will be a religious charlatan. That means a pretender. He will have a charismatic personality. He will be a powerful influencer. And folks, I am telling you, even the Bible says people will be deceived by this, uh, uh, the Antichrist. But do you know in the end, he will become extremely ruthless in a cold-blooded murder. Folks, I am telling you, the Antichrist is going to be on the scene, and he will take control of the world. We use things like one world religions. Folks, that's what the Antichrist is going to be about. All right? You either worship him or you die. And even he'll affect so many things. He'll influence so many things. He will, he will economically influence folks. He will socially influence folks. He will militarily influence influence folks. Politicians, he will influence. And religion, he will try to take over the world. So we see this, and I know it sounds negative, folks, but we just have to preach what the Word says. And then the beast, notice verse 8 again, who was and is not and will ascend, will go to perdition, and those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. We've already talked about in Revelation 13. All right, the Antichrist will come and he will, he, he will have mortal room. He will die in the streets. And then he will be raised by satanic power. And everyone will just be marveled, and they, they will just be astounded that that happened. What is Satan doing? He's mimicking Jesus Christ. That is exactly what happened to Jesus. He was crucified on a cross. He was buried and left for dead. And three days later, he arose again. And so many people are going to follow the Antichrist and be fooled by who he is and what he is doing. And it says... The, 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 those will marvel those who are not written in the book of life. Folks, when you get saved, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. But many of these that will be living in these last days, many of them, I mean thousands and thousands of people, will be lost there in those days. And their thought process is, and remember the mark of the beast, if you don't have the mark, you cannot buy and sell. And they will have to, and they will in their minds think, man, I've got to do this for my family. I've got to do this. And when you take the mark of the beast, folks, you are damning your soul to hell. What we see is not always what is real, folks. And that's what this last part is saying. Don't be fooled by Satan. Don't be fooled by the Antichrist. Don't be fooled by false prophets. Don't buy the goods of this world and the goods that are telling us we need to do this and we need to do that. Folks, we as Christians need to do 
what the Word of God says. Galatians chapter 6. Go with me to Galatians 6. Galatians 6, verse 6. Let him who is taught him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Folks, we need to be students of the Bible. We need to read our Bible every day. We need to pray every day. We need to ask for wisdom every day. We live in a dark world and so many things are bombarding us. And we need to have discernment. And the only way you'll have discernment is to know what the Word of God says. Do not be deceived. Verse 7, God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will, reap fle will, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit of the Spirit will reap everlasting life. Folks, in the Word of God, it is black and white. It is either right or it's wrong. You're following God or you're following Satan. Sin is sin, and we as Christians need to avoid sin at all costs. Verse 9, and let us not grow weary uh, while doing good, for in due season we reap if we do not lose heart. Folks, there's so many people today that are discouraged. There are so many people that walk in darkness. There's so many people that have believed Satan's lies. And they are, woe is me, and it's doom, and, and you know nothing ever good happens in my life, and all these things. And folks, Satan wants you to think that. But folks, Jesus has come to give us life, and give us life abundantly. And I think and I believe with all my heart, Christians ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. And I'm telling you, some of you out here today, you need to tell your face that you're a Christian. <laughs> Let me see them pearly whites every now and then. All right? Man, we're going to heaven. We're saved. We got Jesus. We ain't scared of nothing. Let me give you the Arkansas. We ain't scared. We're not scared. God wins, and we're on the winning team. Matter of fact, if I followed some of you around and you said you were a Christian, I'd say, well, I'm not so sure I want to be that. <laughs> Steve said he, he can see people not singing. Well, I can see people sleeping. <laughs> And I know you're praying for me. I know you're in deep prayer for me. <laughs> Folks, we need to be alive in Jesus Christ. We've got something to celebrate. And it is eternal life in Jesus Christ. The last one, 1 Corinthians 6. Folks, if I had to sum it up, do not be like the world. Don't be like the world. Man, we're swimming uphill <laughs> Man, the salmon do it. Man, they get where they're going. Let's do it. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, covetousness, drunkards, revilers, extortionists will uh, inherit, will not inherit the kingdom of God, as such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And again, folks, there are people in the Bible that messed up big time. David messed up big time. He committed adultery and murder. But he is talking about, and God forgave him. But I'm saying those who live in these sins, those that are not convicted about these sins, I am telling you, they will spend an eternity apart from God in hell according to the Word of God. Now, look down at verse 18. Flee sexual immorality, spiritual Im immorality also. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality against his own body. 
Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? When I was a youth minister, Marty, I used to tell my youth, you want to know whether you can do something or not? If what you're doing, if you're not sure, would you do what you were doing up on stage on a Sunday morning? Would your words and your actions be those things? And folks, I'm telling you, we have a moral compass as Christians. It's called the Bible. We have a moral compass called the Holy Spirit. And we need to be following our bodies are a temple of God. That's where Jesus hangs out. He's inside of you. For you were bought with a price. And folks, this is a high price. It cost God his only begotten son. Therefore, look at this. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. Can I get an amen? amen. Folks, we're God's. All right? You may choose, and we do, folks. I understand people mess up. But 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. If you're here today, and if you're not sure that if you were to die today, you would go to heaven, my prayer for you is, when we start our invitation, would you come down to one of us ministers and simply say, I truly believe I need to be saved. I want to know that I know that I know. And there are Christians here, maybe you haven't been doing what you're supposed to do. Maybe today you need to rededicate your life to Christ or come for baptism. You've been saved and you've been thinking about it. You know you need to do it, but you put that off. Why don't you come and we can baptize you next week? Or if you come and you know how we preach, you know who we are, and, and you uh, want to become a member of our church, we welcome you with open arms. Father, thank you for this day. And God, thank you for your word. God, your word is so true. And God, we stand on the word of God. And God, I pray if there's one here that doesn't know you, that today would be their day of salvation. God, I pray your heart Holy Spirit would woo them. I pray that the Holy Spirit would, would convict them and they would come down and they would get right with you. God, our altars are open to prayer. Maybe some just need to come and pray at the altar. God, I pray whatever decision needs to be made, they will do it for your honor and for your glory. God, we love you and we thank you and we praise you for who you are and what you've done. So God, this is your invitation. This is your church. God, I pray that we would glorify you and you only in this time of invitation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?